Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to modern inventions no longer used. And I done a reaction a few days ago and it was I everyday items that are now obsolete. And this is on the same sort of thing as that, but I guess it'll be different things. I'm not too sure, but that was a really fascinating video and you seem to enjoy it. And a lot of those things I didn't even know were ever a thing, which goes to show how they have become obsolete to what to some extent, but yeah, some more inventions that maybe at one point were seen as this marvel, this crazy thing that how they created it or just an everyday thing that was used that has now become not used pretty much. But we're going to see. Maybe some of these I will know about. Maybe some of these aren't true, but we're just going to see. Hopefully going to enjoy. Links are in the description to my Patreon if you want to see some more of my reactions that I can't post to YouTube for whatever reason. And that is pretty much it. Let's just check this out and see some of these inventions. I mean, this was never used. Were these actually used? Was, is this a unicycle? The big wheel ones. Surely these were never actually used. Why would... Because were these before bikes were made? Like these were bikes, but these were before like the normal bikes. Why were they... What's the point in this? Such a big wheel doesn't make sense. There are many inventions oh. that have enhanced our lives, but a lot of them are things that we no longer use. The smartphone has replaced most of these old technologies. In their time, they were pioneering devices, but now they have resorted to just being pieces of history. In today's video, we'll take a look at some of these inventions that are now long gone. Watches. The Stereo 8 was the real name of this product, although most people know it as the 8-track tape. Millions of no people idea. used this in the 1970s so they could have music on the go. In the 1980s, the cassette tape took over and made this 8-track obsolete. This dial-up. <laughs> so... Send and receive information. Telling a number, the computer would use the modem to send and receive information to another computer. For all you youngsters out there, a modem was just short for modulator demodulator. If you ever used one of these, then patience was certainly something you needed. The connection was often slow and it was also broken and interrupted at times. So that's dial up internet, right? And I've heard things about when you dial up, if you call someone, the internet would cut off because you'd be calling someone. So would is it was it just on a computer was the internet just on the computer at this point how did it used to work i have no idea i just i've heard about it and like how hard it was to use internet doing basic things but like was it on a, a router like how i have it now you just have it like plugged into the router or is, was it like on your pc and then if you've done something on your pc you couldn't i don't know how it would have worked but it's fascinating to look back at how these things have changed to be honest. Not only that, but the phone could not be used at the same time to make calls. The wing calculator was revolutionary during its time in the 1960s. The what? It made it possible for people to do complicated math, which included square roots and raising numbers to powers. If you look at them now, they just look like antique mini computers, which they are. This was. This was how calculators used to be. God damn, man. The Walkman came out in 1979 and it made it possible for everyone to listen to their own personal music without disturbing anyone else. These devices took off in the 1980s and they pioneered that awkward headphone look that we all see today. The Walkman played cassette tapes, which meant there was no instant rewind or fast forward to the next song. The Walkman sold more than 400 million devices long before the iPod hit the market. Damn. If you hand this device off to any kid today, they would have no clue how to operate it. See, I've heard of the term Walkman because it's just probably it's just a classic thing that people grew up with, right? But I've never seen what they look like. But again, for this time, this must have been such a game changer. Like you could listen to music whilst you're walking to yourself. It must have been such a game changer. The portable television was never as big of a hit as the Walkman was. <laughs> portable television? What the hell? 
Who's going to carry this chunky thing with them around? Wait, so you just carry, like, say you get in the train somewhere, you just take your big, te like, your portable television with you. This was mainly due to the fact that they were still somewhat bulky and hard to lug around. Plus, there was a limited amount of channels. These were used in the 1960s and 1970s, and Sony was the first company to mass produce them. That was Sony really were ahead of their time. I'm sure it's no surprise that the actual name of this device was the Sony Watchman. The hell? That is so crazy. So you know how I said at the start, like these have all gone now because you can do it all on your phone. It's crazy how your phone, you don't, you don't really actually, I mean, I don't ever really fully think about it. All the things you could just do on this one thing. You used to have to get all these different things to be able to do the same exact thing. Pagers or beepers crazy. were used by many people long before cell phones became readily available or affordable. What is this? In the 1980s, it was common for doctors and rappers to have them, but everyday people also used them. The system would forward incoming calls and messages so that information could be shared. The communication was instant and the network never got overloaded. However, cell phones have sent these to the trash dump. No idea what the hell this is. After the Sony Walkmans became popular, Sony Discman came out. It was a portable CD player that was invented in 1984, although it wasn't until the 1990s when it took off in popularity. I think I had one of these. I don't think I ever used it, but I think I had one. We had one in our house. And again, like, maybe we did use it, I just can't remember. But it's just like a small screen where you put your disc to watch films, right? The sound was much better than a cassette tape in the Walkman, but you couldn't run with them or use them oh, in no. the car, or they would skip while playing music. The other downside to them is that CDs would easily scratch. Oh, so I'm getting this confused with something else then. The DVD players, I think. The small handheld ones that you could watch DVDs on. Whether you had the Walkman or the Discman, you had to have cases for all of your music. One plus for the Discman was that fast forward and rewind was instant with a push of a button. Everyone felt high tech with these, but if you break one out now, most people will just stare at you. <laughs> But imagine carrying that around with you, like, god damn, man. Long before thumb drives and the cloud, computer users would need to use a floppy disk in order to save their work or files. A what? Storage is very limited on these floppy disks when you compare it to today's standards, but modern computers have much more storage, so it has rendered these floppy disks obsolete. What is a floppy disk? The disc? peak usage for these was in the 1980s and 1990s. They could hold up to 2.8 megabytes, which is great for a simple text file at the time, but it's barely enough for a photo or two in today's modern age. Wow. Mad. Gramophones or phonographs were created in 1877 by Thomas Edison, and it was his favorite invention. This was the first device that allowed a user to play a recording. Edison used tinfoil coated cylinders to record the sound. Years later, the gramophone was replaced by the much lighter record player. The video home system, or VHS as most people VHS. call them, revolutionized watching movies at home. See, I definitely remember this for a bit of time because we used to have loads of things like that beside our TV. And the VHS was one, I'm pretty sure. Don't know how often it was used, but we had one. The first home video recorder came out in 1965. The Sony VCR used a reel-to-reel -reel format and it could only record in black and white. By the 1980s, VCRs were in many households. Not only could you watch your favorite movies at home, but you could also record your favorite shows and watch them later. Typewriters were first invented in the second half of the 19th century. They were much faster than writing by hand and they were also much neater. Typewriters evolved over the years into word processors and then computers which basically sent this item to the technology graveyard. In the future, the need for typing on a computer may disappear as voice to text becomes more widespread. Wow, imagine that, you just you, you literally just read it or you say stuff and it just writes out how you want it, that would be so easy. The tape drive is an antique item now, but at one time it was a necessary thing to have. This data storage device stored data on a magnetic tape and the operation took place overnight. Compared to today's standard of saving data, it was super slow. Finding what you needed on that tape was also time consuming. 
It's another item from long ago that required a lot of patience. The IBM Simon was the first smartphone even though that label didn't exist at the time. This was a smartphone? <laughs> what the fuck? It was invented in 1992, long before an iPhone came out 15 years later in 2007. Bro, look at that. Simon became available for sale in 1994, and yes, it could send emails. This device was the beginning of the super smartphones that we all know today. Damn. The boombox or ghetto box. Boom boxes. Yeah, I've seen. I mean, I've seen boom boxes, but I've never actually seen people carrying them nowadays. Blaster was a great way to have music on the go, but it also meant that everyone else had to listen to it as well. <laughs> this was portable, but many of them were big, heavy, and required an endless supply of batteries. If you never had one of these, then you were probably born after its peak in the 1980s. These devices can still be purchased today, but they are much smaller and cheaper. Modern versions do not need batteries as they are rechargeable. The DVD was invented in 1993, but it took a while for this to catch on because people were still happy with their VCR players. In 2002, the DVD finally outsold the VCR. Really? That late? I thought it would have been way before that. DVDs ruled the world until modern streaming options became available. They are still sold in stores, but they are fast becoming obsolete since the main consumer on the market isn't interested in them. The audio cassette, also known as the tape, first came out in 1963. These allowed users to listen to music, but it also allowed them to make their own recordings. They were durable as well as portable, and they became available for usage in the home, the car, and just about anywhere. Eventually, the CD would put a dent on its popularity, but there are still plenty of people from the 80s who have tons of fun listening to these. Personal data assistants, or PDAs, were quite popular, and they made life a lot easier for many people. They held various pieces of information, such as names or phone numbers. M music, video, email, web, Wikipedia. Wait, Wikipedia was a thing back then? So it's basically just a phone, but you can't actually call. Would you have, like, passwords on this and stuff? Because it's got all your information. They also help people set reminders for meetings and manage their time throughout the day. These devices had pen-based keyboards, voice recognitions, and could even send a fax. They became obsolete in the 2010s as smartphones, which were smaller and lighter, gained in popularity. Wait, these were a thing if in the 2000s? I've never seen one of these before. What the heck? CRT TV stands for cathode ray tube television. In the 1960s, almost every American household had one. Sony stopped making theirs in 2004 and everyone else stopped in 2008. They were basically just huge, heavy, boxy monitors, and it's hard to believe that we have bigger televisions now that are lighter and flatter. ARPANET stood for Advanced Research Projects Agency Network, and it was invented in 1969. It was an experimental computer network that some say is the very beginning of the Internet. The ARPANET was funded by the Department of Defense, and the purpose of it was to connect computers at research facilities funded by the Pentagon. This service has not been used since 1982. <laughs> well, but they had that before, so you could do just similar things, just it wasn't as wide as the internet is now. It's just weird to me how they even managed to make the internet from nothing. Who even pictured it and like decided we're going to make this thing and it's now going to be the main thing of the world? Obviously, that probably wasn't the plan. But it's just crazy to me that you could. It's just it led to this thing that is now the internet, which is how everything is pretty much ran. Betamax and VHS competed for a share of the market in the 1980s. It was invented in 1975 by Sony, and the heavy analog machine could record audio and video for up to an hour. 
In 2016, the company announced it would stop producing these Betamax tapes, which seems kind of odd since they have not been popular since VHS took over the market in the 1980s. <laughs> not needed at all. If you were living in the 1980s, then you probably remember these. Calculator watches were relatively popular among tech-savvy people. What Even Marty McFly from the Back to the Future series had one. In some ways, this little device helped pave the way for PDAs and smartphones. That Very few sweet. people even wear a simple wristwatch since there is a clock on their smartphone. That's so fascinating. A calculated watch. That must have been huge back then, but now that just seems like kind of useless. Which is the point, right? But... Laser discs were huge and bulky, but they were expected to take over the market from VHS tapes. However, they were quite pricey when they first came out in 1978. Laser Plus, their 12-inch diameter kept most people from investing in them. They remained on the market until consumers latched on to the DVD. Reel-to-reel -reel tapes was a standard until digital recording formats came along. Sound professionals use these along with other industries that had a need to record conversations. The audio was recorded on a magnetic tape held on a reel. These are certainly big and bulky when you compare them today to digital devices. Would they have used these in like interrogations so they can record the audio from the interrogations with the police and stuff? I feel like they would have. I feel like I've seen them in that sort of stuff, but maybe not. Maybe I've seen them in smaller ways, but maybe this is how they were before, I don't know. The transistor radio was used to listen to music and the radio. This beloved device was everywhere in the 1970s. For many people, it holds a special memory as it introduced them to the world and brought them music. The telegraph changed the world when it was in use. This form of communication allowed users to communicate over great distances. It worked by transmitting electrical signals over a wire stretched between stations. This device was the foundation for many other communication inventions such as the telephone, fax, and the internet. I'm sure that many of these devices are something you're familiar with and perhaps you have some special memories associated with them. Of course, there are many others that could have been mentioned, so let us know what those are. As always... Well, there we go. A lot of these I didn't know about, but a lot of them I have seen before and stuff, but... It's just crazy to just see this stuff and how it's changed. My parents bought their first VCR in 1985 for $900. We weren't allowed anywhere near it. The floppy disk will live on as a universal icon for save file. Oh! So I have seen that, I think. It's crazy how a lot of these things are actually coming back into cultural living. So you're like, yeah, it is kind of like a nostalgia thing. I feel like it's quite cool to like see, say you've got like one of these things, a Walkman or a boombox or whatever. Like, yeah, people like, it's just cool to like have certain things, you know, because they're unique in their own way. But it's fascinating to see this. And if you want more of these obsolete invention type videos, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to do so. But yeah, until next time, like, subscribe. Peace.